I was a boy traveling with my grandmother through Providence, she pointed out the Soldiers and Sailors Monument and said, you know, you have an ancestor on that. Daniel Daly, I know, was an Irish immigrant. He moved to the Knightsville section of Cranston, worked in the mills, and uh, he enlisted in the uh, Fourth Rhode Island, Company C. He took a three-year enlistment and shipped off. After the successful campaign down at New Bern and Roanoke, the Fourth Rhode Island pulled out, but they left, I think it was about 8,000 soldiers in, in North Carolina. And Daniel Daly was one of them. And unfortunately, August 1862, he died of disease. When I was looking through some cemetery records, I came across the fact that my great-great-great-grandmother's brother, John H. Lawrence, served in the 1st Rhode Island Light Artillery in Battery A. They were the first battery to leave Rhode Island in June of 1861. In September of 1862, after months of experience and been in uh, many battles, um, unfortunately John was shot and killed at Antietam. During the war, Rhode Island gave more troops per population than any other Union state. The nearly 2,000 men whose names are on that monument were the sons and the fathers and the brothers of Rhode Island families. After the war, when they wanted to erect a monument, in the city center of the state capital, they turned to the Grand Army of the Republic, the, the recently formed veterans organization made up of Union veterans, for input. Very early on, the GAR had uh, established the foundation of what we now call Memorial Day. And when it came time for the dedication of this monument, um, the planners worked with the GAR and drew on a lot of the ceremony from what was then called Decoration Day uh, to create this, this wonderful, meaningful uh, event. It was an event that we can't even imagine with the the, the amount of people who were there and the Grand Army invited uh, not only local dignitaries but also the dignitaries of other states, uh, all the New England states and, and beyond, but specifically they set up bleachers, um, rows and rows of bleachers for the families, for the widows and the children of, of the men whose names are on that monument. And uh, downtown was, was packed um, with, with these families and with the comrades and it was a, a sight to see um, that we'll, we'll probably never see again. We'll probably never see anything like it ever again. Well this monument is extraordinarily moving and it also represents uh, over 1700 Rhode Island who died in the Civil War and it um, is in a location that is uh, observed by so many people and uh, it, it sort of focuses attention on recalling the difficult days of the Civil War, how we came through it, how we were able not only to vindicate basic freedoms uh, and enshrine them in the Constitution, but also come together after the war as one nation. So it gives us both inspiration while recognizing the sacrifice of uh, brave Americans. First and foremost, it's an important part of our history, it's infrastructure that reflects our history and it needs to be maintained, it needs to be refurbished in a way that is befitting of uh, what it represents, you know, the people that sacrificed the important history of our country around the Civil War. Um, second, it's also an opportunity to bring people into the space. Part of that is having people, the citizens of Rhode Island and of Providence, see this as their space and understand their relationship to that space. A uh, One way is through history and we know that there are many people here who uh, find this very interesting. And uh, bringing them into the larger project through a conduit of something that's already interesting to them is one way to build our constituency. And more importantly, building constituency has the park being used in a good way, makes it a healthy city uh, center. Yeah. Well, I, well, I look out the window all the time. Uh, and when I look out the window, I always, I always notice a number of different things, and that's that people are coming and going. And that's exactly what public spaces are supposed to facilitate, right? People coming, bumping into each other. I've always said that uh, parks are absolutely our equalizers in society. 
know, whether you're rich or poor, tall, short, black or white, wherever you come from, we're all equal inside of a park. One of the reasons Rhode Island's unique, we're a small place. We know each other, we see each other. And when you can encourage that kind of interconnection, you'll discover in many cases you have a lot more in common with people than you think. And that's part, part of what makes us different and also makes us, I think, an example to other parts of the country and the world. It was intended to be a community. The men who built this monument built it for the comrades, but it was also intended to be for the families of those men. The widows, the children, those families, many of whom still have descendants here in Rhode Island today. Whether they were descended from the second Rhode Island Infantry who fought in every major battle of the Eastern Theater, or they were descended from the 14th Rhode Island Heavy Artillery Colored Regiment, which was a trailblazing regiment at the time, this monument was even more of a great equalizer than the war in many cases. Here are the names of Rhode Islanders who gave the last full measure of devotion to the cause. You don't see the color of the soldier's skin. Here are men who are willing to give their lives for the preservation of a nation and for the freedom of a people. That's what I see. And I also see the hard work of the people who for 150 years have been the stewards of these memories and the stewards of this silent sentinel that overlooks our capital city. The intention at that time was that the memorial um, would outlast everything, would outlast the lifetimes of the people who designed it and planned it, uh, would outlast the particular family members that were at the dedication, and that we as Rhode Islanders today would still find it relevant and important, and I do, um, and I suspect that many Rhode Islanders do. I think as a soldier, and if you know soldiers, most will say the heroes are the ones that are left behind. And in honoring, I think, in honoring the Civil War soldiers, I feel that I'm honoring all the soldiers that have served. Every generation of Americans have been challenged to defend our country, defend our values, uh, and their sacrifice continues to inspire us today, and it should. It tells a really important story about Rhode Island's history and about the sacrifice of men, probably mostly young, from all walks of life uh, who um, gave us so much. We can never forget that. Yeah, this is your monument, whether you live in Watch Hill or on Summit Avenue in Providence or in Cranston or in Johnston or in Newport. You know, we're a small place ultimately and uh, the Civil War was a big thing. So it sits in our capital city because it's our capital city, but it's yours. Our Civil War memorials serve as reminders of the more than 750,000 human beings who died in this cataclysmic conflict between 1861 and 1865. The 1871 Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Providence commemorates the sacrifices made by so many in that community. In preserving this monument, we continue to honor these people. One such man who played a powerful and poignant part in my documentary, The Civil War, is Sullivan Ballou. His haunting letter to his wife, Sarah, reads, My love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly on with all these chains to the battlefield. Let's save this statue that bears his name and the names of so many others. Thank you. <laughs>